what's happening realize nation i'm coming to you guys with something new something very interesting that you haven't seen on this channel i'm going to interview with a fellow youtuber a fellow comrade of mine that played ferret now, i met this man this mysterious man on a dark corner of the internet i won't uh mention which corner that was but it was very dark and we definitely gravitated towards each other because we share a lot of the same common goals, a lot of the same outlooks on life. And I feel like he is going to be able to give you guys quite a bit of value. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce him to play Ferret. Woo! All right, guys. First of all, absolutely awesome. It was a dark corner of the internet. I advise you guys not to go there. Bad stuff. All right. Yeah, this is this is me. I don't we definitely have some parallel ideas as far as everything goes. We'll get more into everything, but I do appreciate that uh kind of shady, sketchy side of the of the uh little introduction there. It adds to my uh my anonymous thing here. Enigma. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Man. All right, guys. So um, I know many of my subscribers aren't familiar with your content. Many of them wouldn't have seen some of your videos. So can you briefly explain to the viewers what your channel is about? Like, what could they expect to see from your channel? And what's the ultimate goal of the Play Ferret? Right. This is a very good question. Uh, it's something I've had to give some thought myself. I didn't really get into this so much with a very defined goal, but I feel that I do have a more intriguing idea as to what I want and where I want to go with this. I would, I would love to say that I'm as composed as you are on your channel and have this grand, beautiful scheme that I'm going to lay out. And, <laughs> but it's really not that very, not very interesting. It's my channel represents a storage of fleeting thoughts. It's a way to think deep and elaborate upon my thinking. Primary, primarily different, I guess you could call them ideas, uh, intellectual pursuits, different. We're going to probably step into the critical thinking thing, but my channel is a lot about critical thinking and cyber, hyper self-awareness. It's a way for me to not lose my train of thought and uh, kind of just elaborate. I really wish to create a community of, you know, people who can go deep down in their minds and pull some stuff out and, and share with everyone what they find. Mm. Yeah, this reminds me of... um. Zion in the Matrix, you know, like there's a select group of people that are underground trying to defeat the robots. That that's what your channel reminds me of. <laughs> it's it's some top secret shit straight from that dark corner of the internet we were discussing about before. Yeah, it's yeah, it's funny you say the Matrix. It's one of my favorite movies. All right, sweet. Um. I want to talk a little bit about a discussion we had the other day um, to the viewers. We were talking about meditation and I was um, trying to describe to you kind of how meditation has benefited me in recent years. See, I used to be a person who would react to things. So say someone called me ugly or fat or something like that. I'll probably jab them in the nose without thinking twice about it. I was someone like kind of like a transistor. There will be an input and I'll generate an output kind of like an animal. And meditation has given me almost a space to consciously decide what the appropriate action to given circumstances should be. So I feel like I have more control over my life. And as we were discussing how meditation gives you this, you mentioned something that was very interesting. You mentioned this concept of hyper self-awareness. Now I've watched a video on your channel about hyper self-awareness, but can you briefly or describe to the audience here, what exactly is hyper self awareness? And did you coin this yourself or did you get this from somewhere else? Yeah, hyper self awareness is 
It is a concept that I'm sure has been around by skeptics and those who get trapped in their own mind, uh, schizophrenics, uh, anyone who gives themselves a little bit more elaboration upon their own thoughts. So it is not a term that I came up with more say as I, it would, the concept was there, but I did kind of give it my own uh, brief description, which I consider hyper self-awareness. And what this is, is say, where you stem off with your meditation, it parallels meditation quite evenly. However, it's almost in the same exact opposite way as to what meditation is. So we have meditation, which, and I'm not one to really go into detail with these things because I know that people don't tend to like them, you know, down to a T and describe them. Meditation's uh, different for everyone, but I think the general idea of meditation is to clear your mind and that presents a way to be receptive to new ideas and new ways of thinking as well as, uh, you know, everything that you talk about with meditation, it's, it's really a way to kind of get to know yourself and remove yourself from all the stimuli and situation uh, to be able to better think of things. Well, with hyper self awareness, what we have is in the exact opposite aspect of it is more taking something and instead of trying to clear your mind from it, you're going to obsess about it. And so take, take for example, like a certain emotion, you react a certain way and you want to find out, you know, if someone brings it to your attention. If you have an open enough mind, you're like, okay, you know what? That person may have something, you know, true going on here. Maybe I need to look at myself and see if what they have is true. So you go in and you say, okay, well, they say I get mad at this thing right here, which is a, a stupid reason to get mad. So you look at yourself, you say, okay, well, why am I getting mad at this? And then you go in even deeper and you go in like, well, why does what makes me mad and, and triggers me in this certain way do it? Like what, and you get, you just keep thinking and tripping you, over your own thoughts. And this is another thing that my channel is primarily about is laying out these thoughts that you get trapped in. And to be brief about it, it's just rethinking over and over the different root causes of what happens in your own mind. And this can be anything from emotion to just a basic thought of uh, where a derivative of something might be. It's, it's, uh, Probably something Sherlock Holmes would do, honestly, if I could <laughs> say. Sherlock Holmes of the mind. Yeah. Much. Over obsessing over your own thoughts is, for, it's, if you want to look like you're crazy, do exactly what I just said. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it seems like it will be a very valuable tool, especially for people that are on this journey of personal development, that try and become the best version of themselves. You, you're going to have to sometimes really uh, investigate your thoughts and inquire deeper and deeper and see exactly where some of these ideas and beliefs stem from and then attack them at their root. Now, my next question for you is, where do you think people should apply this hyper self-awareness, self-inquiry? Like what fields, maybe your, the, uh, your emotions that you feel on a regular basis or maybe um, your tendencies to self-sabotage what areas in someone's life should people use this tool in i i could see it most in the self-improvement and self-development field being a very very good tool to use i unfortunately don't have a filter for mine uh, i figure if it's a skill that you learn you could kind of adopt and adapt to the things that you wish to put it into and then leave it out in the others. Unfortunately for me, it is in every subject. So I 
I seem hyper uh, hypercritical of everything as opposed to analytical and, and self-aware. It's it helps me in some things. And then there's other things like basic human interaction where I fall quite short because I'm thinking like, why did I say that? Um, why am I, why would I be nervous about this so social situation? Why, why do I act this way with one person and one way with another? And then you get, you know, social interaction is probably where I'd say it's least valuable because you have least time to think as little time to think and you kind of when you're just talking to someone you just talk to them you don't have to stop and think through your head i would say when you're in a more receptive area uh, more quiet to yourself you need to just think for yourself there's no one around that's the time to use it deconstruct everything that you do about your day uh, actually most people do this right before they're going to bed uh, just deconstruct everything and then you can work on your problems that way. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, it reminds me of the conversation we had, how we said that for social interactions, perhaps it's best to um, use what you learn from meditation, the awareness you get from meditation, where you're more present to the moment and can really listen to someone and just go off that. Whereas when you have to deal with, uh, certain aspects of your life situation like big big changes perhaps a career change or something like that that's when you can sit down grab a coffee and engage in this hyper self-awareness to really get down to what you should do yeah most definitely social interaction is one of those things that meditation would be uh, so helpful i can't even imagine how, or i can't even really stress how important meditation is in that aspect. Uh, social requires you to be on the same kind of wavelength, you know, the same, the same general feel as other people, and you can be more receptive to their facial, uh, facial gestures, their tone of voice, things to that nature. Where you you need that meditation right there to be receptive because you don't have anything else clouding your mind, or it's the hyper self-awareness um that's all it does is cloud your mind but if you're looking for a solution to something that's where you're going to need that whereas meditation is going to make you open to receive information um, yeah. it's almost the exact opposite with the hyper self-awareness so definitely I, I think they both play their part um Definitely meditation for the social interaction, though. I'm completely with you on that. All right, cool. Um, okay, my next question for you is, how do you deal with the emotional problems that arise from questioning everything you believe in or once believed to be true? I mean, we live in a world in which it seems that most people would rather die than question their beliefs. We see this all the time with these religious wars and you know racism and stuff like that. How, how do you get the courage to question some of these things <laughs> this is this is going to be a bit uh, egotistical and the plot uh, the general plot of things currently it's if you want a complete honest picture i would love to say that it was courage but i unfortunately can't be that cool i'm just not that badass <laughs> <laughs> It's it's apathy is what it is. I grew up and pretty much how most people grew up, especially in North America, they they grew up in a like Christian household and don't question what you believe and take everything, you know, don't just just have that cookie cutter lifestyle and never fade out, never never try to touch on something on the other side of the fence post, you know, you don't go over there. It's, it's bad, you know? So when other people do that or when people have these things, they, they have almost like a guilt or, um, I don't, they definitely have an emotional response where mine, I'm almost sociopathic and this is where it gets egotistical. Uh, because I don't, I don't see myself as a sociopathic asshole. Um, definitely an asshole, but 
<laughs> the sociopath kind of turns on and off at will. I'm able to introduce a certain bit of apathy. So, and I want to, I want to really say I'm using that in the right context, but if I know something's going to bother me or something is going to register in an emotional way, I, this, this kind of sounds weird. It's almost like a, a computer programming itself, if you will. But I yeah. recognize that I'm about to have that emotional stimulus and uh, or the emotional uh, report, and I pretty much tell it no. That's not the way that we're going to handle this situation. So say say I come into something like uh, say I was a, a Christian. I'm non-religious personally myself, but say I was a Christian, I wanted to get into questioning my beliefs. It's most people feel fear when they don't have that thing there. And without going into too much detail, I pretty much recognize that fear is the only way or any other emotion that you come through. Some emotions are not the way to make personal progress. You, you yeah. just got to take that leap and kind of, I don't know, bite the bullet. For me, my defense has always been apathy. Just, I just don't give a shit. Maybe I'll find something better on the other end and if I actually venture out that far, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's definitely going to be a big roadblock for many people dealing with those emotions that do come up. It seems that you have a way of dealing with it where you can suppress it or ignore it for the meantime while you entertain the ideas on the other side. So that's something viewers can try and do and can work on i do believe anyway yep you're completely i wish i would have just had this written up and given it to you because you're so much better at summarizing this stuff and this is <laughs> this is why i write scripts for my videos everyone um i can promise you i don't speak like this on my other videos they're they're monotone they're straight to the point you can listen to them a lot easier than my rambling right now and I don't write scripts because I'm a good bullshit artist. Oh, you're, you're so much better at it than I could ever dream to be. <laughs> Bullshitting my way to 100 videos. I'm glad you guys have enjoyed this this far. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I got another question for you here. Um, yeah. At, at what point is it reasonable to stop with this self-inquiry? It seems that some things are much more difficult to narrow down than others. For instance, a fear of heights can be easily derived from maybe a traumatic experience as a child. However, finding out the cause of your constant self-sabotage might be more tedious. Do you find roadblocks? Do you try and push through them in one session or do you give up on some of these um, sessions of hyper self-awareness? What is your process? Oh, yeah, it's that's I feel it was one of the most important things. I had done a video a few weeks ago about this. With this, I don't know if I want to call it a skill, but with this perception, this uh, over analytical thinking that I do, you you really asked a good question because when do you exactly stop? Like when do you know when you've had the right answer, when you've actually come to a stop point or a conclusion? Um, I, I don't know. Sometimes I worry myself sick thinking about stuff. I will just think and think and think and I'll stay awake sometimes at night just thinking because I, I can't get to a, a, uh, a end point or a conclusion that I'm satisfied with. Um, I've spent weeks, I haven't got to the month part on any particular thing. But I've spent weeks thinking, especially on my journey as a man who's going their own way, I sometimes have to ask others uh, for their input, you know, what, what exactly, okay, if I have time, I would like to actually make a quick example. Go on. Okay, so I got to this thing, it was like, Oh, I, I was reading some theory over uh, behavioral things and, and with uh, I think it was with women and how they how they are hypergamous 
and I don't know, I got to thinking about something and it worried me sick. I was like, I, why can I not come to a conclusion? Nothing makes sense about this. It's because it was an emotional thing and I'm a very logical oriented being. I Logic is proof, emotion is, is just kind of fleeting, you know? So I got to this thing, I was like, um, God, I can't think of the subject right now. But I had reached out to the community. I was like, guys, what do you think? Like, and I got some really good answers. But then I got a couple of things that it's what I was looking for. Because I was on this for like two or three weeks. And I was, I didn't know of a stopping point. And I wish I could answer your question better. But I honestly, I don't know of like, you just come to the perfect like, uh, uh, epiphany is the word I'm going to use right now. And so once you get to your epiphany, you kind of just don't think about it anymore. And sometimes you just think about something so much that you do get a bit of apathy. I've, I've heard from many people before you try so much on something and you, it's not that you give up, you just lose the care about it anymore. Hmm. Very interesting. Seems like there's a very thin line between coming to peace with the problem and going insane. <laughs> I had stated in my video that um, I parallel both the psychotic as well as the intelligent. I am not a doctor to diagnose psychosis or uh, a very smart person to be able to say, you know, hey, I'm smart. I'm neither of those, but I do feel a parallel between the two because I can see how one idea can make either one uh, very irritated. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, anyway, I would like to thank you for coming onto this interview. And to my viewers out there, if you guys want to learn more about hyper self awareness and other interesting topics, Go check out his channel, man. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to regret it. Go check out the Played Ferris channel. I'm going to put a little link up on the video here. Um, probably a link in the description as well. All that good shit. Go check out my man. Like his stuff. Subscribe. All that good stuff. Anyway, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me. And hopefully everyone will give me a, a chance after hearing me ramble here. They uh, <laughs> will realize that it's a lot better over there. I can promise you. <laughs> it's a lot better on that dark side of the internet <laughs> oh yeah take protection that's all i'm saying <laughs> anyway cheers buddy thanks uh, cheers man <laughs>